The opinions expressed on the Custody Queen Show are for informational purposes only and are not a substitute for personal, professional legal advice. The persons discussed are fictional and not based on actual clients. Thought it was love, had kids in between. You can count on us with the custody queens. Yeah, you can count on us with the custody queens. Happy Saturday, Go Country. I'm Sam McBride. I'm here with Kristen Holstrom, and we have a very special guest personal injury attorney, my best friend, Ashley Watkins. Hey guys, thanks for having me back. So Ash is back. So before we jump into today's episode, we're gonna talk a little bit about the crossover between personal injury and family law and some cool stuff that we have kind of been checking out. We're gonna go ahead and jump into the book of CQ, which Kristen has. And for everyone that doesn't remember or may not have been listening to our show, uh, Ash, Ashley Watkins was on our show when we filmed in Vegas for everybody, and uh, she is a partner of the law firm, the personal injury law firm, Sam and Ash. And not only is she is, is she a beautiful and smart attorney, she is just one of the most interesting and just truly awesome humans I know. So not only is she just a great attorney, she is just pretty awesome. So enjoy the show and make sure you check out Sam and Ash after the show. All right, I'm gonna make sure that Ashley feels super uncomfortable because is there any other way to start a situation? I love making people feel awkward. It's the best way to start a Saturday. <laughs> it's the basis of our friendship. <laughs> it's very true. <laughs> Ooh, this is a good one. I didn't even have to look too uh, hard for this. What is your point of no return? What's my point of no return in life? Yeah, in life. I don't even know what that means, Kristen. Okay, so what is it, like if, you know, I hit my boiling point fairly often. Like, you know, I can't even say words on the show because <laughs> they're probably explicative. But you know, like when you hit a point with yourself where you're like, okay, I need to make a change either with my lifestyle, my work-life balance, something, what is that point for you? Yeah, that's actually a really important question. It's something I don't think we acknowledge enough when we're working full time, taking care of the needs of people that are going through either family law issues, or in my case, accidents and injury claims. Those are significant things and we often put all of ourselves into that and we forget to take care of ourselves. And so usually I will hit a point in my life where I'm just drained and exhausted and I just have to step back take a moment and realize I first and foremost, in order to take care of everyone else to the best of my abilities, I have to first take care of myself. And so I will usually just maybe take a night off rather than go on that work business meeting, go on that thing, I'll postpone that and take a night, go to a spin class, walk around, my, you know, I've got a little dog that I love, give him a little extra love. So um, that's probably the best thing. If I just notice I'm too drained. Yeah, and it goes back to the the airplane, you know, the airplane. How many times have you heard, you know, you got to put the mask on yourself before you can put the mask on your children, which most parents don't think that because we always think we want to put other people's needs before ours, but it's really true. I've had it said to me a lot in the last few months. And Ashley's right that being any professional, being a CEO, being a partner at a law firm or you know, just even being a parent you often put other people ahead of yourself. And I personally will run myself into the ground. I will go on no sleep for hours or days. And then I hit a point where it's usually emotional and I kind of have to look at myself in the mirror and say, you need to cancel your meetings for tomorrow and you need to take care of yourself. And I love going to get a massage or a pedicure or just really spending time that has nothing to do really that's of any importance. And Sam, I know you hit that point too quite often. Yeah, and I, I think what happens is you don't necessarily realize you hit that point. Like, I realize I'm cranky and I'm getting better about expressing, like, this is not the day to interact with me, but a lot of times I feel like we're so into, you know, work or whatever obligation you have, whether it's, you know, being a parent, both, and you forget that you are actually kind of deteriorating and then your quality in each area of your life without realizing it is kind of on the downturn. So it's really important. Um, and I, Ashley's like me, Kristen's like me too, in that you can kind of see it in our face. <laughs> <laughs> so Kristen bought this shirt that for me that I don't know the exact verbiage, but it basically says that if I'm not saying it, 
you can see it on my face. Yeah, and then I realized I'm very similar and I bought the same shirt for me. <laughs> but but it's true and and you know for everyone listening, we're family law litigators and Ashley is a personal injury litigator. We often work with people that are in a very hard and detrimental part of their life, you know. And so these people are, are at a low and we want to come in and we want to make their life easier. We want to help fix the situation. And so we kind of ignore some of our own issues and our own needs because we put so many people ahead of us. And as parents, we do that every single day without thinking. But to all of our parents out there, all of our professionals, you know, I can't say it enough. Ashley's right. You can't take care of other people if you don't first take care of yourself. So, all right, I'm gonna pass the book to Ash and let her pick one for Sam. Oh, I get, okay, this is good. This is, oh man. Oh, this is, I like this one. What's the kindest thing you've done for a stranger? Um, well, I like to think of myself as a pretty nice person. I think recently the kindest thing I've done is fill up someone's gas tank. That's a lot, (laughs) especially right now, yeah. yeah. That's awesome. What about you, Kristen? Kristen's always <laughs> You know, I, I am a true believer that, you know, karma comes back and that if everyone just takes five minutes out of their day to try to do something, it all comes back around. But not too long ago, I was having dinner with my family at one of those Tepon restaurants. My kids love, you know, the yum yum sauce. And I could tell there was a single mom sitting at the table with us and I could tell that her son had some health issues just you know, by observing. And I could tell that the dinner that they were ordering, they were getting lobster and shrimp, they were A, celebrating something, and B, that that was probably a very expensive dinner for a single mom. And so I just bought their dinner and I didn't say anything. I just, you know, I, I didn't I didn't even let them know. I just paid for it and it turns out that the mom had posted on Instagram thanking the random stranger that bought her and her son dinner. And it turns out that we had a mutual friend. And, oh, yes. you know, the friend saw the post and said, oh my gosh, she's my boss. <laughs> um, and it turned out that that kid, the child was, um, he had just gotten approved to get a kidney transplant. And so they were celebrating, you know, that process. He's been in and out of the Rady's uh, hospital for quite some time. And so now I follow them, I follow their story. Her and I are acquaintances. But, you know, to me that, you know, it wasn't a big deal, but to her, it was a very big deal, so. Yeah, and I think it's a really good point. It kind of just goes back to how something maybe small in one person's life can make a huge impact on another. So it's just a reminder to, you know, go out there and be kind. Ashley's not kind at all. I don't <laughs> uh, so I'm not, I'm not even going to ask her when the last time. <laughs> I would say she probably did something this morning. <laughs> no, I, did, I haven't this morning. But one thing that we always talk about is, we with our clients we know a lot about what they're going through and what we're forgetting a lot in today's society is every person is going through some type of struggle and and you don't know what necessarily it is and to one person not being able to fill up a gas tank that's a huge ordeal to another person that's just their weekly struggle and so we can't compare and contrast the is my struggle as bad as that person's or my life's more miserable or difficult so we just need to always take a step and a moment step back in a moment to appreciate that everyone is in this game of life and going through stuff and trying to do their best and so those like small acts and large acts of kindness they really do make a difference and matter. And so I'm I'm like you guys, there's nothing better in life. And there's no greater feeling than when you can just help in, in an unexpected way. And cause that look that people give you is, it's really rewarding. It is, that's my love language for sure, is, is gifts and affirmations. Because that smile, that means more to me than anything. And I've learned being a boss and being a mom and trying to have my kids replicate what I do. But being a boss, I really, and even with my clients, I had to really learn how to stop comparing one client's problems to another person's, or even what I felt, you know, like, oh, I would never get myself in that situation. How did this person? And over the last, you know, decade plus, I've had to really learn just what Ash said is that everybody is going through it. Some people are more vocal, some people are more vulnerable and they don't wanna share, but think what the world has been through in the last few years nothing is normal anymore and I I think maybe the point is too is like compare yourself to other people in a larger 
way like we are all going through struggles if we start getting down into the like well I've had more sleep than you've had or I had you know this long commune and you didn't have that or you didn't have to do this last week that's where we start to break down and not help each other and really that it's at down there where we need to help each other is because we're all going through something different every week like some weeks I'm very sensitive about issue a and other weeks I'm not at all affected by it so I mean we're all kind of on and up and down. And that is the service you guys get when you hire the custody queens for your family law issues or when you call 1-800-419-7772. And that's also the service and the motto that you get when you hire Sam and Ash, who have a Newport Beach office and service all of Southern California and also an office in Las Vegas where they serve that area too. And I love Sam and Ash's motto. I think it's something like, you deserve it. You deserve what's right. There you go. You deserve what's right. And that is very, very true. When you are hiring a professional to take care of a very important aspect of your life, like an injury or a separation or child custody or divorce, you want to make sure that you are hiring someone that not only understands the law, because that's only half the battle, it's understanding humanity and wants to advocate and work for you in a way that you're not just a payment to them. Absolutely. I Do love we- that. Do we give her the book, Kristen? All right, give her the book. All right. We'll Sam g- likes finding these really philosophical questions, <laughs> and she takes I like a to really long time to, yeah, to pick the most awkward question. Well, yeah. while she's picking, one other thing I was going to say is that's one of the difficulties of social media. Social media, everyone is constantly putting out their best, mm-hmm. and that's, everyone is just seeing everyone's best at the their filtered, best. The filtered, the fakeness. Yep, and so that's when I think sometimes we forget that even though their Instagram might look great, they're still humans, and they're probably having some things go on in life yeah and I I try to really be very real on my Instagram uh, sometimes to my detriment but you know I'm a hot mess and uh, you know I always post like what life is really about because I don't always have a glam team to make me look like I've slept you know 12 hours and I don't always have someone that is telling me where to be and when I'm often a total hot mess and I love that about you because I am too I there's two (laughs) versions of me and if you know me it takes about a week to figure it out that I am very put together or I look like I might not have a home. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, If you see me show up to work with wet hair, which has probably been five times in 10 years, that is a a big red flag to to stay near me. Stay away from me that Close your door and order her lunch. (laughs) Did you get one, Sam? I did. uh, And it's actually a perfect question for you. Oh, man. Um, But I'm going to add to it. It's what's your favorite restaurant, but I'm going to say what's your favorite restaurant in Orange County? Oh, my favorite restaurant in Orange County. I love part of everything for me is the experience and the people, not just the food. And so there's a place down in Newport Beach called Ark uh, Butcher and Baker. And I'm really good friends with Noah and Marin, who own the restaurant and Chef Noah and it's his food. And they did, they stayed open during COVID and they had this little grab and go restaurant that had maybe two seats if anyone wanted to eat a sandwich there. And through COVID by staying open and just nurturing the community and listening to what people wanted and needed during that time, they now have one of the largest patios, seatings, and... And they did it overnight, by the way. Yes. Like you, I'm, I don't know at what hour, but you like drove by one day and there was a couple of tables and the next day there was a giant patio and... Yeah, and that's one of the things I like is they're a great reminder is when you run a business, you have to one, listen to the consumer and what the consumer needs are because that's changing. But also you have to be flexible and ready to move and do things overnight while the rest of the world's sleeping. Sometimes we have to work. Um, you and have to be creative. You've got to be creative. Like the, what Samantha's saying is one night it was three parking spaces and then you woke up the next morning and those parking spaces were patio seating, but they were slanted because they were parking spaces. Yeah. <laughs> and then a month or so later, overnight, those slanted parking spaces were leveled out and raised and it was now a perfectly level patio. So um, I love Ark Butcher and Baker. It's a casual daytime, nighttime fun. What, what kind of food can you get there? Oh, everything from tacos, pizza, fresh fish, and steaks. What else? I mean, they've got just great mac and cheese. Comfort. What do they call it? They call it SoCal comfort food. And so everything that I love. Uh, What's that dessert? 
the carrot cake. The carrot cake. Ooh, yeah. I love a good carrot yeah. Cake. There. I mean, there. <laughs> you think you're ordering a regular slice of cake? It's six layers and huge, and it's it's an incredible place. Um, yeah. It's so a sharing. You, you got to get on the Peloton after you eat that. Absolutely. The right. Um, so I love Arc Butcher and Baker, and then if I had to do like a fancier restaurant, more like date night, um, but like serious date night, because Arc Butcher and Baker is a casual t-shirt and jeans you could get away with. I'd say either Broadway by Amar Santana in I've Laguna. Been there. I've been there. By far exceptional food, or um, his restaurant in Costa Mesa, Vaca. Very good. So those are my. I think three. I've been there once. Yes, I've taken you there once. And they have a drink, like a vodka drink, but it's gin. <laughs> no, it's not. So the restaurant is Vaca because uh, it's meat. It's all based on steaks and tapas on, from Spain. So it's V A C A. Right. Um, Sounds they, like vodka. Yeah, I know. And so their their house drink is a Vaca tonic. And so <laughs> you. I thought I was ordering a vodka tonic, yeah. but it was gin. I know. I asked her. I, I asked Samantha. I said, "Do you like?" Uh, gin and she says yeah I love gin I was like okay great and I order a vodka tonic and she goes wait what that's not what I wanted <laughs> see I heard vodka and I got the cow yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah so those are my restaurants I love Orange County I love finding new ones so if you have recommendations for me I have a great one uh, my parents live here in Newport and they have a restaurant called the dock and Ooh, you can actually yes. you know ride your Duffy up. If you rent one, you can pull it up if you have one. It is more of a, a, an upscale, nicer mm -hmm. restaurant. We've actually hosted a couple company parties there. But I am, t it's very small, a um, couple couches, a couple tables, you know, but it's family owned, husband and wife, and I think maybe a couple other family members. But I'm telling you, the best filet mignon I've ever had. And I am pretty tough on my steak, you know, on my uh, expectations. Phenomenal. I Phenomenal. think we, we had a holiday party there. we did and if you pair your steak with prisoner red wine i think it's a blend i promise you it, you can't go wrong it's a beautiful place now okay, i know so what i'm doing tonight i guess I, it's time for mine yes i was gonna ask um okay so if you want to go somewhere really fancy i would suggest cassidy's <laughs> um and the reason why is because i if you live in Newport, you probably already know this, so I'm being redundant, but if you don't, it is the absolute hands down best patty melt and cheeseburger you can get. And I mean that very seriously. Ashley, would you agree? I would agree. And I'm a cheeseburger connoisseur, so I can yes. absolutely agree. You gotta get a little pepper plant sauce on that and you're good to go. But it is not <laughs> upscale by any means. I, I was just gonna say, I think that the Wear term I used to heels. call it back in my <laughs> 20s was something else. But I will admit, it's probably been 15 years since I've had a burger or a patty melt there, but I do remember those 2 a.m. burgers being very good. I, I guess I should admit that it is a little bit of a dive bar. A um, lot bit of a dive bar. <laughs> say what you will, um, but it's a great, great hamburger. No, I love it. And actually, you and I went uh, maybe a few weeks ago we went, but it's always, for me now, it's a, a daylight, daytime adventure. Yeah. I don't go after we, After we got our ears pierced. Yeah. <laughs> We're, me and Ashley have realized our friendship is very childlike. We've realized that we're like 15 year olds. Um, okay, so let's get into kind of what we want to talk about today, which I think a little bit of is the crossover between personal injury and family law. So Ashley and I were talking a little bit yesterday about how there is kind of this crossover and, you know, I, I'll throw the floor over to Ashley regarding personal injury and damages, but um, then I kind of want to talk about how that crosses over into family law. Absolutely. So one of the things that we're always dealing with is at the end of your accident claim, um, what happens is you either get into a car accident, you slip or fall, you get hurt, you've got damages. Those are past medical bills, future medical bills, your pain and suffering, your past lost wages, your future lost wages. All of that kind of culminates into what is the value of your case. And then you get a settlement and then you have to pay off your medical bills and your attorney's fees, costs, et cetera. But then you're left with this net recovery. And what I was talking is always clients want to know, how does this affect my pending divorce? Is this, is the, what are the tax implications of this? And so as a personal injury lawyer, I sometimes have to step back and go, one, I'm not a, a tax lawyer. I can't give you tax advice. Here's a list of tax lawyers that you can contact and will happily answer the question. I have to do the same thing when those settlements potentially impact divorce proceedings, 
and uh, settlements and also custody or spousal support awards. So um, that's always a interesting dynamic. And then I, again, I give a client a list of family law lawyers, but really it is the custody queens. So they can call and ask, how is this future settlement or current settlement going to impact my divorce case? Yeah, and it's actually a, a very interesting crossover to family law. And we get this question a lot. Um, in family law, how your assets and debts are going to be divided and characterized, is the term that we used, is going to be based on when you were married and when you were separated. And there's that period of time between the date of marriage and the date of separation. In California, we are a community property state, which means any assets or obligations that you incur or um, acquire during marriage are presumptively going to be community property. So. The same thing is true with an action that arose, a personal injury action that arose during marriage. In California family law, we would characterize that as community. However, big red flag star, <laughs> um, although it is characterized as community, there is a portion of the family code which specifically allows a special designation for that asset to go to the injured spouse. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that all of that recovery or asset would go to that injured spouse, but that's where we start. And then the court can do what the court always does is look at the facts of the case, look at the interests of justice, look at how, how much the recovery is, how long ago or what the lapse in time um, of the actual cause of action was, and they can adjust that. But the family court must at least give the injured spouse half of that. So we start off from the premise that the injured spouse gets 100% of the community recovery, despite it being a community award, and then it can kind of deviate from there. So it's a very interesting area of law, and it's a rare area in family law where you see a, a potential deviation from what we normally do, which is a quote unquote 50-50 split of your community estate. Yeah, and this is, I, Sam took a lot of the words right out of my mouth, but this is a very complex area of law. So make sure you contact a certified family law specialist when you have this issue, because it's very important to discuss when did the injury occur? You know, how long were you married? How is the damages or the award characterized? Because oftentimes it can be partly for pain and suffering and partly for lost wages. So. You know, that we, we're giving we're giving advice on how this crosses over, but do not, but do not make any assumptions. Make sure you call Sam and I, and we can give you the information on the family law side. And if you have a personal injury case, there is no other PI attorney that I would recommend more than Sam and Ash. And this is really, really good information, but nothing is better than actually discussing your case and your facts and your specific issues with us to make sure that we can give you the best advice on that issue. But Sam, you took the words right out of my mouth. Well, and I was just about to say, I think you made an excellent point is that although I kind of gave an overview with the potential in the law and how it can deviate from what we generally see, what is so important is kind of figuring out what type of damages you have, what type of recovery you have, how your settlement is structured. So every case is not going to be the same. And that is kind of Kristen and I's age old advice is don't take the generality for your case. Don't listen to what your neighbor says happened in their case. Call an attorney, let them know the specific facts of your case, and then get advice from those specific facts. And one thing I will add and kind of take bootstrap off what you're both saying is be candid with your attorney. You've retained them for a reason, and when you pay that retainer fee, you get some great benefits, and that's attorney-client privilege. And so I always tell my clients, I go, if there is a chance that you're going to go through any type of bankruptcy proceeding, uh, divorce proceeding, custody issues, you just need to talk to me and be upfront and keep me in the loop so we can we can go at these issues together and I don't have to potentially do damage control and fix problems where we can avoid them altogether. And one thing, I mean, for catastrophic injury cases, uh, if someone, for instance, loses a leg or a limb or becomes paralyzed from the waist down and they're married, 
the spouse has their own loss of consortium claim. So they are part of the claims process and in most cases their interests are both aligned. And one of the unique situations though is we can, our office can represent both the injured spouse and the loss of consortium spouse without any conflict. But we always tell them, if you're going to potentially separate or get a divorce, now you've got potential conflicts. Those potential conflicts create issues for us lawyers, and we have to advise you on them and get approval to represent both of you. But the important thing is we don't want them to or turn into actual conflicts that impact your case. And so just my greatest advice to every person, whether they're going through a divorce proceeding, custody proceeding, an accident claim is talk to your lawyer, be candid with them and let them help you because that's why you have them. Yeah. And I will also say a, a good piece of advice is a lot of times people want to call in or want to talk with an attorney and they want to bring their family or their family members in. Um, there's a real big issue there because the attorney-client relationship can be severed by the virtue of a third person being in the room. But I think to kind of add on to what Ashley's saying is you want to be able to have a truly candid conversation. So have that first. And if thereafter you want to have a support person in your courtroom or something like that, then we can talk to you about the benefits and consequences of that. But you want to be sure to get that information out and you can't truly have a candid conversation with somebody else sitting next to you. So protect the sanctity of that attorney client relationship that you want to have and enjoy because like Ashley said, there's some significant protections associated with that. Yeah, I've had several very awkward consultations where I've had to ask someone to step outside because it was very clear to me that the person I was talking to was holding back information that I needed to know. It would change my strategy. It would change whether I came out very aggressive or more kind of let's see how this plays out. And there are times where I've asked, uh, whether it's mom or dad, whether it's a significant other, you know, it, can you please leave? Because I need that open and honest communication with my clients. And it is a lot easier for attorneys to prevent something from happening than it is for us to try to do damage control at the counsel table because we've been blindsided. And I can tell you there's been a few times where I've been walking up to the counsel table and, you know, um, somebody wants to tell me something right as I'm walking up. Now, that creates a very awkward situation, but what it really does to me is saying, hey, if I knew this a month ago, it's really not that big of a deal, and I could have prepared, I could have filed the appropriate motions, or I would have been prepared for my argument considering those facts. But when I get blindsided walking up to a table and I'm trying to process it as I'm giving my introduction and saying you know, my name and my law firm to the judge, it's kind of like, okay, now it's a much bigger issue than it really is. Yeah, and I mean, when you have a client that doesn't tell you the truth or give you context for the whole story, your advice is going to be limited. So if you don't give me all of the information I need to give you good advice, you are going to get advice based on facts that don't actually exist. So if you want to feel good in that moment, you will, but that will be short lived. Right. So because and here's a great example If somebody comes and says, you know, so and so said this really horrible thing to me and I reacted this way. But I don't know that you've done that 10 or 11 times in the past. My advice is going to shift the way that we're handling your case is going to shift. The potential settlement is going to shift. So you just want to make sure that even if you think it's hey, maybe this isn't so relevant. If you have a question or you have that little gut feeling that we all know we should listen to, tell us so that we can give you that advice. And I'll just add the biggest concerns a lot of my clients have is time. How long is this process taking and how much is it costing me? And it will take longer and cost more money if you withhold information from your lawyer. Right. And so um, just that's a piece of advice that if you want to potentially save some money and make the process as efficient as possible, give your lawyer every piece of information. Don't feel embarrassed or ashamed because we hear a lot of stuff. Um, if you're paying attention to or have paid attention at any point over this year about the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard saga, I mean, there's crazy things that happen in life and relationships and yours is not going to be that unique. Just be candid right. and open and do what's right for you. And that's uh, talking to your lawyer. Yeah, no, I agree. When just one last tip is when I ask a client to tell me their story or draft their narrative, I say over share. 
I want you to give me everything, and if I don't need it, I I won't include it. But I want to know who your doctor is. I want to know what your you know goddaughter's name is. I want to know anything that could be an issue in this case. And it is a lot less expensive, as Ash just said, to get us the information, let us create our strategy based on that information. And we're not here to judge you. Everybody listening, my life is nowhere near perfect, okay? And I always think people are judging me. Do I look tired? Do I look prepared? Did I do this? I did stuff when I was 20 that I wish I hadn't done. We are not here to judge you. And I promise you, all three of us have probably heard almost every crazy story on the planet. So when I have a client say, oh, you're never going to believe this. And, you know, internally, I'm like, unfortunately, I have heard this many times. So we are not here to judge you. We are your advocates and we are going to advocate zealously for you. So if you have a personal injury case, whether it is a dog bite, it is, you know, um, a car accident, whether it's a medical malpractice and you lost a limb, whether it's loss of consortium, there is no other attorney that I would hire or recommend my friends and family to hire than Sam and Ash. And I don't say that lightly. Usually I give a list of three names. And at the end of the day, I wanna make sure that my referrals are treated as if I am the attorney handling that issue. And so I have a very much a lot of respect for Sam and Ash. So Ash, how can our listeners reach you? Of course, uh, the best way is just going online, salmonashlaw.com. Uh, that's our website. You can find us there or 1-800-304-2000 is our 24-7 intake line. So that's the best way. And I want to end it with Ash. Say your motto again, because I truly uh, love it. Our motto is you deserve what's right. And that's just one sentence, but it truly is what's right. So everybody, thank you for joining us this Saturday and every Saturday. We hope that you took a little bit of this conversation. It doesn't really just apply to law, it applies to life. We are all humans and we are in this journey together. So call us at 1-800-419-7772. That's 1-800-419-7772. Thank you for joining us this Saturday and every Saturday on Go Country 105. And remember, let let love rule. rule.